Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today I'm going to be showing you an $88 tool that'll absolutely change the way you work in your metal shop and the quality of the products you produce. Check it out. All right, so the tool I'm going to be talking about today is this little pneumatic edge beveler or chamfering tool. Now, essentially, this is just a little air-driven grinder that has a 45-degree cutter on the end, a pilot bearing, and some carbide inserts, very similar to what you would see on a small metal lathe. Now, when I bought this, um, I bought it off of a photo from Amazon, didn't have any reviews, and honestly, I didn't realize it was going to be this tiny, but it's great. It fits in your hand really well. It's adjustable speed. Uh, you can adjust where the air comes out of it, and overall, it's awesome, um, either for a chamfering, for a cosmetic look, or for a beveling, for weld preparation. This thing is great. So I'll bring you in tight, show you some of the details of it and how to adjust it, and then I'll show you how well it works. So you don't get much in the package with this thing. Uh, you get a tool to take the carbide inserts off and a tool to adjust this collar. Like I said, it's a very, very tiny little tool. And back here, you can adjust where the air comes out of it which is kind of nice if you don't want it like kind of blowing in your face. And you can adjust the speed of the tool right there by adjusting that little knob. So this collar is adjustable with these two set screws and you can loosen these. And then this collar basically threads off. Now that's how you're going to adjust how much of a chamfer you're cutting on your piece. Now, if we unscrew it all the way, we can see the actual carbide cutter in there. So looking at the little carbide cutters in there, like I said, they're triangular, essentially lathe cutting tools. Um, I did find a source for replacements online as well. Amazon has them and it's about 30 bucks for six inserts. So you get three changes and each one of these, since it's a triangle, you actually have three cutting edges on it. Uh, one of the things that I am concerned with wearing out though is this bearing. It already feels pretty loose and I'm not really sure uh, how I'm going to get another one of those if that thing dies, but we'll see how it goes. So you thread this piece back on um, and if you wanted to try to get a exact bevel height using this little scale, you would have to bring this down and zero it then there's a set screw there. You could loosen it and move it around. Um, I'm just kind of setting it by eye because there's really no good way for me to reference anything off of that and I don't work in metric. So it's got potential to allow you to get repeatable chamfers if you wind up setting and resetting it. So right now, I'm just gonna set it down uh, to a small chamfer and we can give it a shot. This little key that comes with it is like a mini Torx and this will take the carbide inserts off. So don't lose this. Now, something to note, this thing is loud and it throws really sharp uh, metal chips off of this cutter. So when you're using a tool like this, you want to really protect your face, wear a face shield, and you want to protect your hands because these little carbide cutters do a great job of making very, very sharp chips. I also usually wear an apron when I'm using a tool like this just because I try to keep those little chips out of my clothes so that I don't track them into my house or out of the shop. So here's a typical piece of plate off of my plasma table. Now this is, this was a base plate that I scrapped and I cut some other pieces out of, but I think this will be a good example of how you could do insides of parts or outsides of parts using this. Now, what you see on the table here is a magnetic chuck. This was from an old surface grinder that I picked up and I use this to descale parts off the plasma table. These things are awesome because as you can see, I can slide this plate around, but if I engage this lever on the back side, that plate's locked in and this thing is heavy. It's probably about 65 pounds. So it doesn't really move around on the table unless I want it to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my angle grinder to prep the back of this so I get um, a good grab and then we'll hit it with the beveler. All right, so now that I've taken some of the burrs off the back side of this plate, it's pretty flat. So I can clamp it down and then we'll use this tool to put a little bevel on these inside corners. <laughs> 
So in just those few seconds, I was able to get a really nice bevel on the inside of this part. And one of the things to remember too, is that this is a plasma cut part. And a lot of times when you cut with the plasma cutter, there's a nitride layer that builds up from the intense heat and cooling, and it can be very difficult to break through. So without any issue at all, I was able to cut this chamfer in uh, using this piece. And as you can see, you know, it's very, very fast and very controlled. Now that's a pretty small bevel. We could make it larger. Um, but what I'm looking for here is I want to make sure my bearing doesn't touch my magnetic plate. Um, and that's what's nice about this too, is considering that the bearing is so small, you're actually able to get nice and close um, and you can bevel on a magnetic table like this. Or if you didn't have a magnetic table, you could hold this down and just run this tool around it. So let's do the inside of one of these holes so you can see how that looks. So you can see, look at how nice of a bevel that put on there. You know, and you could accomplish this, this with a countersink, but if you didn't have a countersink that size or this hole was very large, you wouldn't be able to do that. So I'll do an outside corner and then we'll move to some other applications where you could use this thing. Now I know most people aren't gonna have a magnetic chuck like this, so I'll show you how you can also use it just handheld. Um, I'll use this edge as an example, and I'm just gonna rip this edge bevel in um, and you can see how you don't really even need to get too crazy with clamping of this thing because this cutter being so small doesn't really put too much force on it. Obviously, the more rigid a setup, the better, though. You can probably hear my compressor running in the background. So, you know, obviously this thing is using air. I have an 80 gallon compressor, so you're gonna wanna, you know, have a compressor that's large enough for you to use air tools on, but that's a really, really nice, consistent bevel in just a couple of seconds. So here's another great application. This is a piece of eighth inch wall tubing and I drilled a hole in this using a hole saw. Now there's a pretty good little burr on it and if I wanted this to look really cleaned and refined, I don't have a countersink that will bevel that edge. So we can use this to easily put a nice bevel on there. Now the thing to remember though is that you are relying on this bearing. So like in this instance, I had a weird little burr inside that hole. So it did kind of move around, but in the end, it's a very nice clean cut. And if we wanted to, let's say this was some sort of a finished piece, we could easily bevel around this edge as well. So another application I'll show you, my last one is just on a piece of tubing. This, this is 120 wall tubing. It's got a little bit of a sharp burr on it that I'll take off with the grinder. And then I'll show you how we could use the beveler to gut around that edge as well. So really fast, consistent chamfer on that piece. So I showed you some test pieces on how we can use that tool, but just for a quick practical stance, these are some bike racks that'll be in an upcoming video that I just finished. They're going out to paint now. Now, when I made this one, it's shaped like a heart and I wanted to make sure that it had proper support underneath it. So I made some gussets on the plasma table and then to kind of jazz them up and just make them look nicer, I used the chamfer tool to dress all the edges. And I also addressed the edges of the plates that these are welded to. So I'll take you in close and you can see how those look. All right, so that about does it for this little video and this little product. So like I said, right now you can get one of these for $88 on Amazon. There's a couple of other models on there as well. They all look exactly the same and they probably all are. Some of them come with an extra set of carbide cutters, which might be worth it. Um, the pack of carbide cutters that this particular manufacturer recommends is 28 bucks and it's for six cutters. So now if each cutter has three sides, uh, you're gonna get three basically lives 
out of each set of cutters. So if you figure the set that comes with it and then three additional sets, you're gonna have 12 set cutting edges that you'd be able to use. I think 12 sets of these would last a pretty long time. Um, I haven't been gentle on these cutting edges so far um, and they look pretty good, you know? The thing about these types of carbide cutting edges too is that they're probably not gonna get dull. They're likely just gonna chip and break. So you're gonna know when you need to flip the cutter around um, and use a new cutting side. So anyway, as always, there'll be a link where you can check this thing out and purchase it in the description through Amazon. Um, look around for these. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you have experience with these and maybe you have some tips on how to make them last longer, or maybe there's a better carbide cutter you could recommend, please leave those down below as well. The first time I spoke about this was over on my Instagram, which you can follow right here, at Make Everything Shop. I got a ton of great feedback on it, so I thought I'd jump on here and make a video to share this with a broader audience. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you wanna see more videos like this, more videos about tools and videos in the shop, be sure to subscribe to my channel right here. I've got a couple upcoming videos, one on drilling metal. I've got these bike racks and a few other great projects that I hope you're here to watch. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, I am Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks. Oh, I just went deaf.